Rene Elliott, founder of Planet Organic and put togetherer of Planet Organic Rescue Package. Welcome to Brand Growth Heroes. Thank you so much. It's so great to see you, Fiona. It's so great to see you too. And it has been wonderful getting to know you over the past few months. We've meant to um, record this episode so many times and due to my cancer and then, you know, the news at Planet Organic and you putting together the rescue package, we've had to put it back and back and back, but we're doing it now. So everybody is going to be, before we get into, you know, who you are and your story. And one of the things we really want to focus on is like the resilience that you've built up and in, in, in running your own business and going through the highs and lows in business, the bit we really need to get to straight away is what is happening at Plant Organic? What has happened? What is going to happen going forward? Give us all the latest news. <laughs> How long do we have? <laughs> I've, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all day. All day. Okay. So, well, thank you so much for inviting me on. And the timing is so interesting because you'll have this first, um, you'll have this out first. Because I haven't, yeah, I've, I've talked to a couple of press people, but no one live. So, so it was just really crazy because, and I'll try and keep it short because the truth is I, tr- I told a friend the story recently and the story of the month that I went through before we bought Planet took an hour. Okay. Wow. Nobody has that kind of attention span, but I was called on March 30th by the current CEO who said, uh, just to give you the heads up, we're giving notice of administration in half an hour. And I just thought, what? Wait, what? Because yeah. the last I had heard, they had raised six million pounds on a 35 million pound valuation in December and wow. just opened two stores. And I thought, well, why would you do that if you thought you were going under? So he said, I'm giving you the heads up to call friends and family and say that they've lost all their money. And I thought, oh gosh, I didn't understand the implications at that point. I thought if someone bought the company, we'd all be fine. So I realized that I had lost a big chunk of change in that moment and my friends and family. But my first thought was, what, what do I do to rescue planet? And we were told we had two weeks to rescue the business and that planet was working on that as well before it went into administration. And we then started on this absolutely crazy, incredibly intense journey where every day it seemed like something different happened, something went well, some kind of catastrophe, left, right, up, down, different stories, you know, deadlines changing from the administrator. It was absolute chaos. I canceled all of my clients. My husband took holiday because we thought, okay, what are we going to do? And the first thing I did is I reached out to the previous CEO, Peter Marsh, and said, I know you're working, but if I can get someone to buy Planet Organic, they're going to need a team. Would you come back? And he said, I do anything for Planet Organic. No. And then I called Al Overton, who was my buyer, the buying director, who I hired 19 years ago. Who we all love Al. Al. And I, yeah, everyone loves Al. And I said, Al, I, I know you're working, but would you come back? And he said, anything to help Planet Organic. So mm. I thought, okay, I've got a team. And then I, we kicked into gear just calling people who we thought might buy it. And then on one of those conversations, I called someone who I thought was a really good fit. And in the conversation, he said, Renee, why aren't you buying it and taking it over? And I I said, oh, no, I've moved on from that. I'm a a coach now. You know, I'm not a retailer (laughs) and I don't have the money, you know, and I just lost a big pile of money. And he said, well, what if you did have the money? And I stopped and I sat there and I kind of imagined being back. And I said, well, when you put it that way, yes. Are you backing me? And he said, no, but I ah. just know the answer to the question. <laughs> and then the next day he emailed and said, I am backing you. And he gave, he promised all the money that we needed, but Crikey. over those next couple of weeks, that money fell away. Other mm-hmm. money came in. We were backing someone else who was going to buy it. It was an absolute roller coaster. And then it got to a point where we didn't have a bid and it was supposedly the day before or a few days before. The, the thing is the goalpost kept moving. So the deadline kept shifting. And my husband and I were sitting there saying, look, we have for so long had to let other people manage the business mm-hmm. uncomfortably for me and him. And he said, are we going to do that again? Are we going to hope someone puts in a bid that's high enough, someone bids for it, that it isn't just the brand that's bought? And he said, who are the best hands to take Planet forward? And who feels Mm. such a deep 
love and responsibility that this business has to carry on and do its work in the world. And we looked at each other and said, us. Okay. <laughs> so I said, I can't do it without you. Are you in? Wow. He said, I'm in. Now, I what said, was your okay. husband doing before this? He is in commercial property. He's the, um, okay. He's at Horsham District Council. Okay. So, okay. So he's had to, he's had to, is he dropped that or is he doing both or? He called. So I'll, I'll tell that. So he's, he's okay. doing both, but he called the day after we got it and said, I think I need to retire. And they said, please don't please do two days a week. So he's in, but he okay. said, I'll quit my job and I'll do planet. So we put, we, and we managed to get the money together really quickly, which was a real sign for me that we were on the right path. Mm -hmm. And we didn't, but we didn't know until the last minute on Monday afternoon, we, it, there was us and another bidder and the administrator called and said, good news. We've accepted your bid, but it was incredible because in order for me to be even waiting for that call and not to be in complete stress and exhaustion because it had been four weeks of this, I had begun to live what I had known as an intellectual construct before, which is trust yourself, trust the universe, be a non-attachment, which is not gripping. And the, my thinking was, I don't know what's going to happen. I can't make anything happen. And I don't know what the best thing is to happen because honestly, I wanted the best thing for planet. And I thought I believe in a greater, I don't intelligence or alignment or just that the unfolding of life mm -hmm. is smart and good. So I thought I need to do good action to make that happen, but get out of the way, not try mm -hmm. and force things or push things. So that meant I was very peaceful throughout the whole process. I wasn't stressed, although it someone, was exhausting. Someone I know says, to me often, hold it lightly. Yes. And I think that's a beautiful expression. Helps me a lot in my life. Uh, hold it lightly. It doesn't mean that you don't care about it. It doesn't mean that you don't try and influence it, but it's about that grip, as you as you say, and it, it, sa it saves you, doesn't it? It Absolutely. gives you some, yeah. So, Because people have said to me, oh my God, it must have been exhausting. And it wasn't. It could have been. It would have been a year ago. I hadn't okay. landed this then, <laughs> but so, it was amazing. So there's, so there's, so there's a few things just you know, I'm sure we've kind of, I've kind of taken a risk with this, assuming that everybody who's listening to this knows what Planet Organic is. Uh, <laughs> you know, they, they will because they're food business people around the world. <clears throat> uh, and I'm sure they can all recognise that a, a, a kind of an institution that has gained love in our hearts in, in the UK and the global market for kind of, you know, all, all, of, the, all of those food brands and ways of eating and uh, that are good and sustainable and uh, a pleasure to shop in and a pleasure to supply in, in the past, um, that they really matter to us as an industry, you know. So everybody kind of feels like they have a piece of this in uh, that they want it to do well and they didn't want it to fail. Some people didn't want it to fail because they didn't want to lose money and they didn't want to lose listings. But most people outside of all of those people also, you know, don't want it to fail because they love having it in their lives. What happened to Planet Organic before before we continue with the story of where it's going next and, and how you're managing all of this? Why? How did the demise happen? Did you get to the bottom of that? Well, no, not not really and not completely. And I think that story will come out over time. OK, but what I can I don't like making assumptions either. I really, you know, don't let myself do that. And I talk to a lot of clients about not doing that. It's a dangerous thing. Mm -hmm. And often assumptions are negative. But what I have seen is that expensive decisions were made. And I don't think there were the right decisions. Okay. And it created this problem in the business. And also that the expansion program, and this is my opinion, mm -hmm. was misguided. It was too big, too quickly at the wrong time. Okay. You know, this is a time where we should be pulling in and polishing the business up because we're in a recession. We're in tough times. So I think all of that added together meant they broke it. And that often comes from, you know, uh, having a VC backing a business, doesn't it? Because it's this push for more, 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 bigger, bigger, bigger. Um, probably yes. I don't know the ins and outs of that, but I also know that things really changed when 
the new CEO started about a year ago. That's when they embarked on this program. And, you know, where did that plan come from? I'm not really sure, but it was obviously agreed between them. Okay. So it was just, it was a departure from where we had been. As and as how as- involved, how involved have you been in Planet Organic since you left the management team? Um, how many years ago was that? So in 2009, I was nudged out of the business and I continued to have a part-time role and an influence. I was on the board as an employee and a shareholder. Okay. And then in, tw- I think it was 2017, when the VC came in, I had to sell down my, my shares so they could come in. And then I was out as a director and employee. I, was, I remained as a shareholder, so no influence. No influence, right. But you've always be, remained as a shareholder. And at, at, at the end of the day, this is your baby. You mm-hmm. conceived I Planet Organic. It. Yeah, you birthed it. What year did you birth it? 1995. 1995. And how many years did you run it for? Until 2009. I mean, you know, that's just huge. I know. So, and I ran it with my husband, Brian, from 99 to 2009. So I started with a business partner, which ended, I always say, in tears. It ended in the high courts. Um, he tried to remove me and it went to trial, which was horrible. And then I said to my, to Brian, come work with me. And we ran Planet together for 10 years and then we, we left. One of the questions that uh, my alumni group on WhatsApp asked yesterday, I, I told them I was interviewing you uh, this morning and I said, any questions, you know, because they're suppliers to Planet Organic. So it's kind of only fair to give them that market hall opportunity to say, you know, ask Rene anything. And one of the questions was, you know, we want to know, does it feel like sweet retribution? The fact that she's able to come in now and rescue the place after she was, and this is my words, not yours, pretty much screwed over all those years ago. They're, they're kind of rooting for you and they want to know that you're getting your getting your revenge. No, I'm not that person. <laughs> I might yeah. have been that person years ago, but I've, I've, I've moved on. I've let go. I've, you know, forgiven the past. But what it really felt like for me is deep peace and joy. And I think that feeling comes from, and I've been trying to put this into words and I haven't succeeded. And it's funny, I was talking to a girlfriend about this this morning, trying to find the words for this, because it feels to me like right action or right situation is here. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, the right thing happened because I should be back in. And I, I let go of that. You know, if you told me, Five, 10 years ago, Planet was going to come back to me. I would have said, shut up. There's no way, you know, it's on a different path. So the fact that this has happened to me feels like a miracle. It's a huge gift to me. And I feel so good about it that it just feels like the right thing. That, those aren't the right words, but you know what I mean? I do, I do, I do. And and I can see that and I can feel that in in, in how you're speaking about it. Destiny. a destiny and destiny for planet and maybe hopefully destiny for the UK high streets that have planets in them as well and destiny for the suppliers that supply. We'll get there in a sec. I just wanted to ask you this, which is what does it mean for the work that you were doing? And I know that you've got a really important date coming up soon, don't you, with your women's retreat, which you might want to <laughs> yes, talk about you. right now. But like, what are you going to do with all of that? Ah, well, and then we'll get back to planet. I'm going to lose my job. No, I'm shoehorning Planet into my week. So, so what I'm doing is I I started a second business when, um, when I really ended up walking away from Planet or leaving Planet with the VC coming in, and I set up a mentoring and coaching business where I really love working with a small business, and I know that you do that as well. But I focus on the business planning but with personal development woven through that. So for example, I work with a lot of women and I haven't met a woman yet who hasn't said, I suffer from imposter syndrome. I lack confidence. So I started on a personal discovery journey over 30 years ago. And that is about um, brain plasticity, changing old patterns, changing negative thinking, realizing how your health back can be. Yeah. And managing yourself. So Mm -hmm. I say, know yourself, be yourself, manage yourself. So I weave that through every module of the business planning that I do. And I also do a a personal coaching journey that's over a year that really is transformational. And that is based on six spheres of well-being, which is where planet started for me. It was about physical well-being and that 
covers physical well-being, which is move, fuel, rest. It has three components, occupational, psychological, economic, social, and spiritual. And that year journey is really transformational development. And there are elements of that that I weave through my business planning. So I'm trying to squeeze that into two days a week now. And then my third company, which is Women Tree, I'm launching my first retreat called Women Rising, which I'm so excited about, but suddenly it's everything squeezed in and that's on June 5th. That's really soon. And I would, I would so be going on that if I wasn't oh. still healing from my mastectomy oh. and going uh, to London to do my radiotherapy around that time. But it sounds wonderful. Do you want to give it a quick plug before we get back to the planet yes, story? Thank you so much. So the idea is to gather women together. And I've had this idea for a long time. I've finally put it into form. And the tenets are nourish. So how do we take care of ourselves first properly so that we can do everything that we do as women, work, family, kids, extended family, charities, whatever we do, all of that stuff and show up sustainably day to day without running ourselves ragged. Fulfill, which is about, are you on purpose? If not, what is your purpose? How do you discover that? And then how do you live that with the confidence to trust yourself and trust your small, still voice, as I call it. And then belong, which is coming into this group of women who want these things to and share these values with you and supporting each other so that you can then rise, which is our fourth pillar, rise back into the world, do your good work while you're taking care of yourself, while you belong to this lovely group of women who will be coming together over the year with different touch points that we're creating and then go back into the world and this ever growing. This is what you're doing right now. You're rising even further. You probably <laughs> thought that you were rising into your coaching world and now you're rising up another level into this, you know, get planet back on the in, on the right track. Um, yes. Thank you. So what I'd so, like to say is I yeah. would like to offer your listeners a discount on that. Oh, I know it's great. short notice. But it would be Brand Growth Heroes 20, which would be a 20% discount. They can send that code in if anyone's interested. That's a, an amazing offer. And so it's the 5th of June for how long? Four days. And the the web the website where the retreat is, is womentree.uk. Oh, and whereabouts is the retreat going to be? Devon. It's Devon. stunning. It's at Huncham okay. Court. It's absolutely beautiful because it's also about resting and stillness and incredible food and yeah. movement. It's not just about the training. How are you going to filter through the people who just apply for that because they see it as an investment in getting a listing in Planet Organic? <laughs> oh, honey, I've had that my whole life. Because that's what I do. <laughs> I think great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, fine. Okay. Because I'm going to go and pretend to be really like spiritual and stuff and do loads of like mindfulness and yoga just so that I've got you on speed dial. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, no, I've had that my whole life. I know how to manage that. You know how to manage that. Okay, that's good. Okay, so that's the shout out, everyone. Um, Brand Growth Heroes 20 on womantree.com, right? Uh, get moving quickly because by the time this is going to come out next week, we we, we got to get this moving quickly. So let's go back. So we're, we're how many weeks into the rescue package having been accepted? It's the end of the third week. Okay. You have Al, you have your husband, you have you, right? And There's Peter some Marsh. and and Peter Marsh. Um what is your vision going forward for Planet? How are you going to turn it round? What's it going to look like in the future? And and even more short term, you know, the people, the suppliers who haven't been paid and who've lost money, are they going to get their money back? Um and then the second question I have which is it has been really, really difficult for anyone to get hold of anyone in either Planet or Whole Foods, which is, you know, obviously, a, I suppose, a, I wouldn't a competitor, but also like a co-journeyer, right, on this journey yeah, on the high street. Same market. It's, there seems to be this difficulty in having enough buyers on categories versus numbers of suppliers. So from, a, from my client's point of view, they cannot get hold of anyone to move forward. And it feels like a massive bottleneck. So that's a lot of questions, but just talk me through all of that. This whole journey has been really interesting as well, because I don't know, I didn't know anything about the administration process. And part of the problem going through it was I didn't understand what was happening and it was changing all the time and people had to keep explaining things. So it's really complicated. But what happened in the end? So when it came to that decision, when Brian and I said, we will make a bid to rescue planet. We were making the choice because there was the possibility that 
A, planet would go under. So everybody loses. Yeah. B, someone buys the brand. There were two co- businesses bidding for the brand. I'm not exactly sure who they were. I heard rumors. So all the suppliers lose because there's no stores and we lose. And or we bid for the business, for the stores, we save jobs, we keep the company going. And that was the decision we made. Within that process, there was pain. So what happened with the previous management is they, because they gave notice of administration, when you buy a company out of administration, you're not buying the debt. The debt falls away. We bought the assets from Interpath. All right. So we bought the assets and the brand and the trading name, but the debts are left behind. But we did that to save the future and the trading of the business. So, so what that means is? People, everyone lost. Okay. I lost personally. Shareholders, some of the shareholders lost huge amounts of money. I think yeah. that article's in the grocer yesterday. Yeah. And suppliers lost money. And it's horrible that that happened. And I can't believe that happened and that they let that happen, but it did. And and what I'm thinking is that was then, this is now, that was them, this is us. And our vision going forward is, and I've talked to the team about this because they, the, for the team at Planet, it was really hard as well. It's been very uncomfortable and very stressful. And of course, they want to talk about that and we've done that. But then I've said, let's draw a line in the sand because this is a new vision going forward. There's mm-hmm. nothing we can do about what happened. Yeah. You know, I, I had a supplier on the phone yesterday I've known for years and he said, I'm really angry. And I said, I'm angry too, but that isn't doing me any good. Mm-hmm. And it's just going to make me ill. So I'm going to drop you. that. Okay. And I'm going to look with excitement to the future. So, so unfortunately, that's an unfortunate truth of the situation for those suppliers who were owed money, are owed money, but it's part of the past history, unfortunately. Going and, and, and you know, not to, and not to make little me, of that. Yeah. I just want to add something again. We're trying to work something out because there are suppliers who have stock in the warehouse. Okay. I can't say what that is yet, but okay. I will be able to. We're, we're trying to do something that would support the suppliers. Okay. Well, that's really good to, to know. And that's, again, a proof of the fact that your heart is in the right place uh, Thank you. For, for everybody. So in terms of vision, if if things w- were going wrong and we talked about potentially that being, you know, an expansion plan that was the wrong, that was too big at the wrong time. And that's just a maybe. You're not making assumptions. But what will you do in order to protect it going forward and to make sure that it, it continues to exist and thrive? Yeah. So, so that's the exciting thing. And it's funny because I've talked to suppliers who said, oh, Renee, it's so nice you're back. You know, retail isn't what it used to be. It's really hard now. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. You know, it's always hard. We've been through recessions before and I've been in business for a long time. And I believe that anything worth having is hard work. It doesn't yeah. mean it's bad. It's hard work. And by anything, I mean, business, marriage, children, you know, this stuff's hard. Yeah. It's not easy. So it's about hard work. So the vision going forward, no matter what's going on, because I wouldn't have bought Planet if I didn't think I could make it work. It's to go back to the values, but in a refreshing way. You know, it's okay. not, oh, we're going back to, well, sure. I'm not the same person anymore. You know, the world is different. I'm very different. It's getting back to the values, celebrating those internally and externally. It's rebuilding culture. You know, the team are amazing, but they need loving and holding and training and a lot of things that fell away. A lot of training has fallen away. And even things like the farm walk, we used to take all the team members on a farm walk. I found out that hasn't been happening. So that they can live and breathe your values and your ethos and why planet exists, right? And then it makes sense to them because when you're on the shop floor doing your job, you're very far away from the soil. Mm -hmm. And when you're on an organic farm and the farm manager is saying, and you can see the weeds growing up between the corn or the wheat, and we don't spray those because of this. And you can see the bugs and the life and that it all comes together. And you see a happy, Mm -hmm. sweet cow who's healthy and making the milk that makes the yogurt or whatever. It all comes together. And you realize you're part of something that is bigger and good and making a difference 
to people's health in the community and to the Earth's biodiversity. Do you know, I'm just thinking actually as you're speaking there, because I am lucky enough to live on the Isle of Man, which is the world's only UNESCO entire nation. UNESCO biosphere. It's the world's only UNESCO biosphere entire nation, right? And I'm driving, my my kids go to school in the uh, Gaelic school, Manx Gaelic school, which is very like old Irish. And I have to drive over mountains to get them to school in the morning and then back. And at the moment, the bluebells are out and the the, we're we're rewilding all of the verges. And it's just the most amazing place. And I have to go through a temperate rainforest to get them to school. Oh, honestly, like the other man is stunning. And then we'll come home and we'll spend the afternoon on the beach and everything. But we've got so many food brands on the island that are part of this UNESCO biosphere and no place in the UK on on shelves. So we must look at that another time. We'll invite you over to meet them. Can I come visit, please? Yeah, yeah. You you should actually, do you know what we'll do? We'll do a talk here. And the other thing is a product. So it's getting back to product. So I I'm, I don't know what has happened with buying. I know that there was a statement about we're going, we're moving away from organic to planet. And I honestly can't remember what that meant. But often if things don't make sense to me, I don't remember them. So yeah. we're going back to who we are, organic and healthy. And that all needs to be discussed with the buying team and laid out and the product standard refreshed. But we're going back to the specialness of us as a retailer, because otherwise I don't see the point. The difference, yeah. What what, Does that mean that anyone who is not currently organic in Planet will have to go? No, because there's a, so the the product standard that I left when I left was very, it was like a binary system drop down. So it's organic and it fulfills these requirements or it's not organic and it has to be these things. There has to be very decent reasons to take it. But I'm sure there are products in there that will go. I don't I know what you. they are, but I saw something a, a couple of months ago. I don't even know if it's still there. And I thought, why the hell are we selling that? Because it's not, oh, it's a good seller. No, because one of the truths that we live by is we not only ask, will it sell, but should we sell it? Okay, that's brilliant. We're curating a range and saying to people, mm-hmm. this is good for you and this is good for the planet. So. I need to make sure we're doing that. That's amazing. That is absolutely brilliant. And I can see why that make would make such a difference to your buyers. So we talked about this a couple of a couple of weeks ago when I said, What, you know, it's so difficult for all of my clients right now. And you said, Okay, why? Talk to me about mm. why it's so difficult. And I said, Because they cannot get through to the buyers. Because I know that in, for example, in Whole Foods, there's like one or two buyers across the entire food mm. category. You know, how is that poor person? And sorry if I'm not exactly up to date, maybe it's three now, but for a time it was one or two. How is that one poor person in a retailer supposed to manage new line forms, uh, price increases, um, you know, case configuration changes, range reviews, and all of these new suppliers, these new challenger brands getting in touch with them all the time, basically trying to almost get to the point where they're harassing them because there's no other way in. Yeah. So if they have really clear criteria, and they have really clear views of what's mm. right for their organization. In your case, it's, you know, should we sell it? Then that filter system, that kind of filter criteria is going to be so much easier for them in terms of managing their workload, right? Yes. And I think there are two other things I'd like to say about what you said is, I don't know when you say people are struggling to get in touch with buyers at Planet. I don't know how long that's going on, but I know that long the business... Time. Long time. Like at least, you know, I'd say a couple of years, but like definitely in the last year, it's got worse and worse. Yeah. But it's the same across all the retailers. A departure from business for 27 years before that. So we are in a intense period of stabilizing at the moment. So now is not the time to be knocking on the door. There's a lot of, there's a lot of work happening, but soon the buying team and head office and the business will stabilize. And then, you know, we champion Mm -hmm. new brands. We always have. We've often kind of mentored new brands. So we will be back in that role and the buying team should become available and we'll have a process for doing that. That's what I was going to say. to Al about that a lot. That's what I was going to say. And and, because one of the things that always, I suppose, my favorite thing in the world is when something's not working, how do you make it better? You know, yes. it's, it, a lot of the work I do is, is with that. And whenever I see this happen, I kind of go, there has to be a better way. There has to be a system that allows the creativity and the um, personal choice of the buyer and their understanding of the organization's values. But at the same time, somehow systemizes how they do this without losing the creativity. Yes. So, 
And the other part of that, because I mentor <clears throat> small and new business as well, is if you're knocking on a door and it isn't working, you have to think of something else. Exactly. Yeah. You know, a lot of people think that planet is the answer to their, I know, all their dreams and their success. And I think, well, sure, I can understand that, but you've got to be when things get tough. It builds resilience, creativity, out of the box thinking, different ways to market, different customer groups. You know, you can't just put all your eggs in this basket. So I believe in, and that's harder, but it's part of business. And it's what we've had to do whenever there's been a recession, when there's been a new competitor open up, you, it keeps you on your toes yeah. and it's not easy, but you're growing a market you really believe in. It's funny. I had a, a, it's really funny. You should say this because I had a, I don't do a lot of one-to-one -one coaching um, because it hasn't made sense for me financially in the past, but given the fact that I'm just two weeks out of a mastectomy and at home healing. Uh, I did a one-to-one -one yesterday with a lovely guy and he was saying, you know, I'm just waiting to hear back from Planet. I'm just waiting to hear back from Planet. And I was saying, well, what are you doing in the meantime? He's yeah. like, well, I'm just waiting to hear back from Planet. Yeah. I was like, right, in the meantime, you know, how many cafes are you in? How many, um, you're an impulse purchase, right? Are you really, are you, how many people really go to the back of a health food shop to find an impulse freezer product? They don't. They, they go down their high street. So where do you need to be on the high street for this consumer usage occasion? And in the meantime, yes, Planet's probably part of your future. But in the meantime, you need to be building that business and those evidence points so that if they do get back in touch with you, you can say, well, it's all work already working in X, Y and Z. And this particular founder hadn't really thought that through. They're like many of them. They're like, oh, well, you know, I'll just get a listing in Planet or Whole Foods and, I'll, and that'll be that'll be, yeah. that'll be it. And that... Fiona, that raises an interesting question for me because I'm all about strategy. I love strategy. And your strategy can't be planet. No. It has to be broader than that. Yeah. And when I hear examples of that sometimes, and sometimes people come to me and say, you know, my my plan is to do this, to get it into planet. Mm -hmm. I say, do you have a business plan? Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but look, this is what we do on the Growth Strategy Program, which actually is rebranding as the Brand Growth Heroes Accelerator Program. And we're going to be launching again in, in October because I've had a big break, as, as everyone probably knows, due to my cancer diagnosis. But that's exactly what we do. We, we, we work out where to play and how to win. And where to play is so important. And it all comes down to the consumer need and the consumer usage occasion and where they're most likely to have to to feel that need and where they're going to buy it. And it's true that you're not going to buy an impulse purchase on necessarily on your, you know, in macro, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, wholesaler, you know, you're going to buy it in a small cafe or a small high street store, et cetera, et cetera. And that's, that's one of the first things we do on the Growth Strategy Program. One of the things we wanted to spend a lot of time talking about, and I think we'll do that again in, in, in a few months time, is oh, the idea of, you know, your inner critic, um, stopping you from backing yourself. Yeah. And we were going to spend a lot of time talking about that. And that's one of the things that you're, you're, you're brilliant at. Have you found that kind of raising its ugly head with you coming back to look at taking over planet and rescuing it and letting it blossom again? Or have you conquered those demons? And what do you do when they raise their heads, their ugly heads? It's a really good question because as I said earlier, I'm not the same person I was. So that that is a journey. Okay. And if you took me as a 20 something year old, that voice in my head was really loud, but it's a journey of self-awareness over time. And that self-awareness enables you to make different choices. So I have been practicing this for a long time. So it doesn't mean those thoughts or patterns go away completely. Sometimes they do, but I think the whisper of them is often there. So they may have been shouting when I was younger now there's a little whisper that comes up every now and again. And I think, yeah, it's just a thought. It's not a fact. So I can choose away from that so quickly. So what happens is the self-awareness to recognize those things speeds up and the choice to choose away from it happens much faster. So you get better. You become, I'm a pro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because you're proactively over, over the past, whatever, 20 years or 30 years, you've proactively decided that you're going to deal with this. Yeah. And that you're going to find a way, a strategy to not get sucked into this inner critic. And, and, and I uh, teach this system. because what it is, is it's so empowering. Yeah. And you are then, you're not at the effect of yourself or your thoughts or in your littleness, you're in your magnitude, which is where you want to be. Where you want to be. Okay. So two final things. 
call out to all uh, of the listeners who supply Planet Organic or want to supply Planet Organic in the future. What's the message to them? So for the ones who have supplied us and been burnt, I'm so sorry that happened. It happened to all of us. And we are so grateful if you will come with us on this journey again. And there are people who are supplying us foods coming back into the shops. And we're so grateful to those suppliers. So um, join us and let's have fun and success in the future. And what was the second one? (laughs) The second question is, give us again the outline for your women's retreat on the 5th of June so that before we sign off, we're giving a reminder to those people to go and look at the website and sign up. Thank you so much. So womentree.uk, four days of learning. Um, It's about fulfill, nourish, belong and rise. Beautiful group of women, amazing food. It's also a retreat. So it's about rest and about movement, June 5th to the 8th in Devon. And we would love you to gift this gift, give this gift to yourself and join us on this amazing gathering. And special uh, discount code for Brand Growth Heroes listeners is Brand Growth Heroes 20. Perfect. Okay, listen, Renee, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much for coming on the show, for giving us all of that frank uh, update and also, you know, your 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 thoughts going forward and the messages to, to those suppliers who already supply. Um, the very best of luck with the next few weeks, particularly with your women's retreat, but also with uh, getting Planet back on on. on on its feet. And let's talk in a few months time and let's catch up and do a, a, you know, a much more leisurely uh, where things are going and um, more of this kind of wisdom that you bring to how we get away from imposter syndrome and backing yourself and inner critic and hear about how your women's retreat went. Thank you so much. And I want to come visit. (laughs) Yeah, I would really love to have you here. Thank you so much, Renee. Lovely to see you. Have a lovely day. Bye. Bye.